Yeah. Okay, just a second. <clears throat> okay, so to go back to the novel, I think I, um, um, I've read uh, or I started reading uh, the the um, novel. Um, yeah, I don't know. Have I? Yeah. Yeah. When we when we read the novel, as I said, the introduction, of course, at the beginning of here of the novel, you can see how the narrative moves. To introduce the two main characters, as I said here, really is uh, this young lady, Mrs. Uh, or Miss, I should say, really, um, Daisy, uh, Daisy Miller, and um, um, her family, of course. As you can see at the beginning of the chapter, or chapter one, or the first section, really, there's uh, no chaptering, if you like, but it could be like a first chapter or um, the introduction of the family, where they are in Switzerland, as I said, um, the, um, um, if you like, 
the way they are um, sitting there or staying there in a hotel and the description i think is um, to some extent you know um, description is a bit romantic the way he describes the place the 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 lake the atmosphere the nature and so on um really it's a bit uh, a bit um, maybe attractive and romantic to some extent <laughs> um but um there you can see um uh, in the next paragraph the again uh, introducing of um the uh, aunt or uh, the uh, other characters or the main other characters in the story or in the novel here we see winterburn and his aunt the way the narrator is to some extent um, mocking the the old lady or his aunt um of having all the time um well to some extent really being nosy or being in control of everything um, about his life and i think we we can see this uh, being done there um, and also the idea about about uh, the uh, again the early contrasts between the two uh, people or the two nationalities europeans and americans notice in the on the second uh, page which is at the beginning of top of page seven in the story or the novel we have here geneva was that he was extremely devoted to a lady who lived there a foreign lady a person older than himself very few americans truly i think none had ever seen this lady young whom sorry about whom there were some singular stories so here we we are getting a little bit of um an idea that uh, winterburn is somehow a strange man who may have maybe an extreme sort of uh, strange relationship with uh, with another woman or with somebody we don't know because we really don't know um, uh, the the narrator you know doesn't tell us how in what sense uh, winterburn is maybe maybe having um, another relationship uh, or someone else maybe that's why he was a bit funny or a bit uh, not not uh, sort of normal if you like you know if you can say this as normal to to um, daisy so we say here he was extremely devoted to a lady who lived there you know a foreign lady uh, you know again here we don't we we're not given any details about what kind of lady what foreign lady and so on okay so but this is a, this is an interesting uh, idea because later on uh, maybe daisy would would mock him maybe to some extent about it but winterburn had an old attachment for the little capital of calvin calvinism he had been put to school there as a boy and had afterwards even gone on trial trial of the great old academy on the steep and stony hillside so the idea we 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 uh, we are given here that this question of maybe uh, winterburn has been uh, for a long time in in um, in europe and maybe he acquired a lot of the ideas or things uh, to do with european life and maybe that's why maybe that's why we we think that he is um uh, strange to some extent to some extent uh, strange in the way he treats or he is with with um, with the young lady of course daisy so that's why Actually, as I say, we don't meet this um, this other lady as uh, here we see at the beginning. So we move on to um, uh, the minute when uh, the introduction goes on to see um, Daisy and to meet her for the first time. Notice 
Um, um, notice here the uh, beginning of the dialogue between uh, Daisy and her brother um, and the attention that um, he gets, of course, I mean, how uh, Wittaban, uh, uh, you know, saw her and uh, started talking to her and the way she seemed to be attractive to him and so on. I think we get this idea here at the beginning uh, of, this of this page here. You can see that. Um, notice, I haven't got here the discussion between Interburn and the young boy, her brother, Daisy's brother, Randolph, as they said, which is a funny name, really. Uh, well, to me, I don't know, I'm saying funny, but um, I'm saying it's very un English or un American name. Yeah, I think so. Later on, we shall see this, and I think it's mentioned somewhere about that. Uh, not a, notice here, I haven't got any teeth to hurt. They have all gone out. I've only got seven teeth. Mother counted them at la last night, and one came out right afterwards. She said she would slap me if any more came out. I can't help it. It's this old Europe. It's the climate that makes them come out. In America, they didn't come out. It's these who tell. Of course, you know, this is, you know, a funny, uh, you know, excuse about, you know, he's, he's only a child, you know. I mean, the, bo the boy is, who's saying that his teeth are, um, yeah, because he's still young and his teeth has, uh, are you know being replaced by new ones so that's why he's saying you know <clears throat> um i'm not worried about my teeth when i'm eating a lot of chocolates for example you know he's saying doesn't matter anyway um here winterburn was much amused if you eat three lumps of sugar your mother will certainly slap you he he ventured she's got to give me some candy then rejoined this his young interlocutor, you know, interlocutor, you know, <laughs> James, um, you know, Henry James is, is, I think later on we shall see, is, is funny the way he uses English, really. Interlocutor, why do you say that? Why did you say the other guy who's speaking, the speaker, you know, interlocutor, meaning the speaker. I can't give any candy here, any American candy. American candy is the best candy. You know, uh, yeah, it's here, um, you know, the idea or the question of American and the American and the British, or the, I should say, the European, really, not the British. And, and are American little boys the best little boys, Winterburn asked. I don't know. I am an American boy, said the child. I see you are one of the best, the young man laughed. Are you an American man? Pursued, or oh, sorry, uh, yeah, pursued uh, this vivacious infant. You know, he's saying, he's calling him infant. It is, as I said, he's a young boy. He's, he's, I'm sure he's about maybe seven or eight or something, or nine, I don't know. It doesn't matter really, but the way he is uh, speaking and behaving, because you know he's, he's a child. So again, they started to talk about uh, what is an American, what is being good or not good, and I think this is the idea about it. Um, American men are the best, he declared with assurance. Yeah, we shall see later on. Of course, the irony behind all this later on. We shall see that. His companion thanked him for the compliment and the child who had now got astride of his um, alpenstock and, you know. So remember, this is still the beginning of the introduction of Winterburn to, uh, to talk to Daisy for the first time. Here comes my sister, cried this young man. You know, here again, his young compatriot. Again, here saying compatible means two Americans being abroad or being outside. Um, 
Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I should. I should have used my yeah my camera. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. So you can see uh, here again. They started talking about this, the idea about um, about um, Americans or not Americans. She's an American girl. You bet. Yeah. Again, here uh, he's just continuing to talk about, you know, picking on the idea of what is America. Really, what is an American, <laughs> if you like? Winterburn looked along the path and saw a beautiful young lady advancing. American girls are the best girls, he thereupon cheerfully remarked to his visitor. My sister ain't the best, the child promptly re returned. She's always blowing, she's always blowing at me. Yeah, remember, as I said, you know, he's, he's, he's a young boy, the way he's introducing himself and talking about his sister. So we, uh, we get uh, step by step to know more about these two uh, people, of course, meaning Winterburn and Daisy. I imagine that's your fault, not hers, said Winterburn. The young lady, meanwhile, had drawn near. She was dressed in white muslin with a hundred frills and flounces and knots of pale colored ribbon. Bareheaded, she balanced in her hand a large uh, parasol with a deep border of embroidery. And, you know, again, we're saying um, she was strikingly admirable pretty. Uh, sorry, admirably pretty. Yeah. So we can see how the narrator is describing her as being, as being, of course, James's uh, view again always of uh, American people as being very uh, lovely and, and admirable. Of course, because uh, he is an American, and really, to be honest, uh, in a way. Um, you know, the white, of course, superior to him, to, to him. you know, the superior beauty, etc., etc., of the white, of the white American, which is, I think, again, a very racist somehow, 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 racist uh, issue we shall find maybe later. Here, how pretty they are, thought uh, our friend uh, about it, you know, of course, the they started to discuss this idea, which is, as I said, the dialogue between a young child, you know, a child or a boy, a young, very young boy, and Winterberg. So then uh, the discussion started between the two of them here. In the next paragraph, you can see um, the narrator mocking or commenting on, on this. It seemed to Winterburn that they had been in a manner presented. He got up and stepped slowly toward the charming creature, throwing away his cigarette. This little boy and I have made an acquaintance, he, he said with great civility. In Geneva, he had been perfectly aware a young man wa wasn't a, at liberty to speak to a young unmarried lady, save under certain rarely occurring conditions. Mm. So we can see um, all the time, we can see the comparison, and the contrast, if you like, between, you know, what is European and how Europeans behave and uh, how Americans behave. So as if to say that he wouldn't say this to an American, to, an, to a European girl, to the way to introduce yourself so openly and so naturally. So that's why, you know, he said, Maybe he said this to her because he knew that she's American. Um, you know, as we say here, um, that he said this could never happen to, to anybody else. Uh, or if, uh, if uh, she were a European, for example. Again, notice here, a young man wasn't at liberty to speak to a young unmarried lady, save under certain rarely occurring conditions. But here at Vevey, that conditions could be better than these, you know. And here the question mark, could there be 
as if to say, yeah, now he looks, we have a very lovely young lady, and so, so yeah, he could have reasons. A pretty American girl coming to stand in front of you in a garden with all the confidence in life. So you can see the narrator and James saying immediately but about her position as being confident and being really, you know, free and open and, and so on. So a pretty American girl, again, you see, American girl. You know, as, as I said, this is the main theme here, which is the position or the uh, place or how Americans behave in Europe. This pretty American girl, whatever that might prove, on hearing Winterburn's observation, simply glanced at him. She then returned her head and looked over, over the parapet at the lake and the opposite mountains. Well, because she heard this statement, and for her, uh, you know, it means really nearly nothing. It's just uh, one remark which, to her, this is normal. So that's why she didn't pay really attention to to this man, what this man said. So here the narrator is saying, well, you know, this American girl took it naturally or normally as if this man spoke to her directly like that, you know, as if there's no really a big issue. He wondered whether he had gone too far, but decided that he must be, or he must gallantly advance rather than retreat. While he was thinking of something else to say the young lady turned again to the little boy whom she addressed quite as if they were alone together i should like to know where you got that pole again you can see here the discussion or the little the little uh, dialogue between uh, daisy and her brother you know blaming her brother for eating a lot of sweets because he's you know, a young, a young boy, or uh, he shouldn't eat a lot of those, you know, sweets. Um, and she said, he said, of course, the boy, so <clears throat> I bought it, Randolph shouted. You don't mean to say you have, you are coming to take it to, you are going to take it to Italy. Yeah, I'm going to take it uh, to Italy, the child rang out she glanced over the front of her dress and smoothed out a knot or two of the ribbon then she gave her sweet eyes to the uh, sweet eyes to the prospect again well i guess you'd better leave it somewhere she dropped after a, a moment are you going to italy winterburn now decided very respectfully to inquire she glanced at him with lowly remoteness. Yes, sir. So um, you can see here uh, the, um, the start of the dialogue between Winterburn and Daisy. Um, really, I'm not going to uh, read all this, but maybe I will, um, you know, see that the, the immediately the discussion between them went on and they started to know each other in a nice way. Notice the young lady inspected her flounces and smoothed her ribbons again, and Winterburn presently risked an observation on the beauty of the view. He was ceasing to be in doubt, for he had begun to perceive that she was really not in the least embarrassed. You see here, we can see the narrator is trying to understand whether she's really okay about it, if he talks to her directly or something like that. And you can see here, of course, the contrast, you see. She's natural and she's normal and she would talk to him, no problem. I mean, yeah, he's a stranger, but she would talk to him. I mean, this is, to her, that's, that's normal. You know, that's why here the narrator is saying, well, she's, she is not embarrassed. Why should she be embarrassed to speak to, to him? You know, and the narrator here is giving this idea about, you know, what kind of, of woman she is, what kind of girl she is, I should really say here. that She would speak to him, no problem, because she's open, spontaneous, natural, 
and that's okay, you know, because she's 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 friendly. I mean, yeah, people say, well, you may not talk to strangers. Don't talk to strangers. And yeah, we tell our people, don't talk to strangers. Yeah, of course. But here she she finds it, you know, to her is not embarrassing. She might be cold. She might be austere. She might even be br prim, for that was apparently. He had already, he had already so generalized. And I think this is the word I, I underlined here. And I think the idea of generalization is a key issue in this novel. Really, that's one of the problems in this novel, generalization. Yeah. To always generalize and misjudge and misapply people because she has been, she had been, she was always generalized. People gave uh, ideas and ideas and ideas and gossip and gossip and gossip about her without any well, maybe any sign of testimony, you know, just, uh, you know, stereotyping, really stereotyping and generalizing. And that's why really in a way indirectly we can say that it's a shame. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, she, she was completely innocent of all what they were saying or talking about her. So the idea notice here, with the narrator said, he had already generalized. Now, of course, he generalized that she's okay and she's open and she's spontaneous and she's free and she's nice and so on. So he would talk to her, no problem. What the most distant American girls did. Yeah, so this is it. And notice here the word distant, distant. Meaning, you, as I say, don't talk to strangers. People don't talk, we say to our girls, to our children, don't talk to strangers. Yeah, in a way, you know, here, as if to say, you know, Winterburn is a distant man to her. Yeah, he, she doesn't know him. And he doesn't know her, right? So only because she's an American and he got the idea from the boy that they are American. So what? So he assumed, he generalized, being a distant American or being a distant man, and she is a distant person, therefore she would not talk to him. But then he said, yeah, I mean, people, people do that and, you know, no problem. They came and planted themselves straight in front of you to show how rigidly unapproachable they were. Yeah, so here again, uh, you know, uh, when he was saying they, who they? They means girls. As if to say, uh, you know, again, I think in a very funny way, when, when he said, they came and planted themselves. Yeah, well, I don't know why James is saying this, um, planted themselves. As if, you know, they make you talk, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. So he's giving excuses to Winterburn to speak to her, as if, as if she, you know, as if she was to blame to have appeared in front of him. They came and planted themselves straight in front of you to show how rigidly unapproachable they were. Yeah, but they, you know, I, as if he wants to say that American people are unapproachable. And I think he wants to say, well, that's not true. They are very approachable. And that's why they, he's, you know, immediately spoke to her. There hadn't been the slightest flush in her fresh furnace, however, so that she was clearly neither offended nor flattered. Yeah, so I'm saying that she didn't really pay attention to him because to her, the whole thing was normal. She was not flattered. 
or she didn't think that he was talking to her, or she didn't think that she could answer him, or to her it's okay, she's not offended, and she's not flattered. You know, it's normal thing. Only she was composed. Mm. Composed. Mutamasika. Yeah. <laughs> composed? Yeah, means she was she was sure of her, of herself, and she doesn't she doesn't care about what he says or what he doesn't say and so on. Um, again, you know, the narrator I think goes on to talk about this, you know, in a very strong, as you can see about that, the judgment really of the narrator judging her before even speaking a word yet to us. She gradually, nonetheless, gave him more of the benefit of her attention. Slightly, she thinks, he thinks that she's paying attention to him. Again, what the narrator said, you know, uh, she gave him the benefit, the benefit, meaning he started to guess that maybe she's interested to talk to him. Yeah. And then he saw that act unqualified by the faintest shadow of reserve. Well, yeah, we say reserve, meaning she's, she's, as I said, normal, not conservative here to say reserve. She's not reserved in this sense, because if you spoke to her, she would answer, of course because to her it's normal and natural. It wasn't, however, that would what would have been called a bold front that she presented, for her expressions was as decently limpid as they have, as, sorry, as the very cleanest water. Her eyes were the very prettiest, uh, The, her eyes were prettiest, conceivable, and indeed Winterburn hadn't for a long time seen anything prettier than his fair countrywoman's various features. Her complexion, her nose, her ears, her teeth. Oh, mmm, mmm, yeah, well. Here we have an American man describing the beauty of American women. American lady or American type, and to see whether, of course, as I say, you know, um, to some extent, to some extent, you know, to see here again uh, the racial issue or the racist question, which is, as I just mentioned before, the supremacy or the really the idea about um, about uh, here the the supremacy i said as you said of american of the american white american race i think i think here the narrator is saying is saying to us this is a lovely lady so that's why he he couldn't help speaking to her so he he um, he had to speak to her because she's so lovely and so etc you know the way he describes her as you can see he took a great interest generally in that range of effects. Again, the idea again to say generally, you know, again to see how the question of generalization later on is, is being affected. Notice, and um, was addicted to nothing and as it were recording them. So that in regard of this young lady's face, he made a several observations. He made several observations again he goes on to talk about to describe her body you know her face and to see how lovely maybe she is maybe i don't know it wasn't at all insipid yet at the same time wasn't pointedly what point on earth could ever be um could she ever make expressive and thought it offended such a collection of small fineness and and neatness, he mentally accused it very forgivingly to a want of finish. 
<laughs> you know, this is really funny and crazy to say this about one thing of finish, what finish, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> so you can see the indirect description of Daisy as being absolutely lovely and fine and neat and beautiful and her face and charm and beauty and confidence, blah, 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 you know? So here we have uh, um, a man, American man, looking at all this beauty and therefore, you know, he, he uh, you know, he had to speak to her. Okay, so he thought nothing more, he thought nothing more likely than that uh, its wearer would have had her own experience of the action of her charms, as she would certainly have acquired a resulting confidence. But even though, but, but even uh, should she depend on this for her main amusement, her bright, sweet, supernatural little visage gave out neither mockery nor irony. So really we, we see here again James's style here. What are you going to say here? Come on, tell us, you know. He goes on and on about that, describing her really in, 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 a, in a funny sometimes way about the way she looks and all, all this. But he goes on and on to see uh, at the end of the day, you know, she's um, a lovely, absolutely lovely American girl. The real, sort of, the real American girl, you know. And here we, uh, we, we I think we see this more, more and more of that. Anyway, uh, we see the um, dialogue started between them. Notice you can see this here. I should very like much to know your name, Winterburn made free to reply. Her name is Daisy Miller, cried the urchin. But that ain't her real name. That ain't her name on her cards. You, it's a pity you haven't got one of your cards, Miss Miller, Miss Miller, quite as naturally remarked. Her real name is Annie P. Miller, the boy went on. You know, again, you can see this, this again, indirect introduction of the young lady by her own brother, again, to, um, to um, uh, the character. Again, you know, Americans, Americans always use this, um, uh, the father's name in the middle. They always say Annie P, Annie S or Annie or whoever, you know, they always mention their surname. And uh, I mean, the father's name as in, um, in uh, abbreviation, unlike the English, unlike the English, the English don't do it. They just say Annie Miller, you know, they don't care about the name of the father, okay? So it's typical, you can see this uh, a lot in American society, in American uh, literature and language, and, you know, in many, many ways you can notice this, they use this. Uh, and <clears throat> you can see them right here, I, I'm seeing here, the dialogue went on between them, they started, uh, talking, and I think here we can see, um, you know, both uh, talking to each other, and step by step, uh, really, he started to uh, uh, maybe, uh, you know, come closer to her, to uh, know her more. Notice on the next page here, you can see, yes, said Mrs. Miller, sorry, it said Miss Miller, at once and without examining this analogy. It's always... It always made me wish I was here, but I needn't have done that for dresses. I'm sure they sent all the pretty ones to America. You see the most frightful things here. The only thing I don't like, she proceeded, is the society. Yeah, so here we can see the first problem 
which is, I think, Daisy is correct. Absolutely correct. She said, I, I like the place, everything nice and so on. I'm here. Of course, remember, as we said, Daisy is here in a journey only in a holiday. Maybe for, for a week or for 10 days or for a month, doesn't matter. Or a year or anyway, but just they are here in America, from America too. They're coming here for a visit. And she said, I don't like the society here. Yeah, because later on we know that the society, yes, I think uh, misjudged her. Notice she said again, not only that, but she said people, you know, she explains what she means there by the society. There ain't any society, or if there is, I don't know where it keeps itself. <laughs> yeah, meaning I don't see people. I don't see people talking or behaving like, like normal people or like normal society and she, she she's saying you know i don't know what's wrong with you people here in europe you are not behaving naturally or normally as if to say you know where is the people here where are they you know she said i don't see them and she's asking him do you i suppose there is some society somewhere but i haven't seen anything of it i'm very fond of society and i've always had plenty of it I don't mean only in, you know, uh, Schenectady or in New York or anybody or any place else. I used to go to New York every winter. In New York, I had lots of society. Last winter, I had 17 dinners given me, and three of them were by gentlemen, added Daisy Miller. I have more friends in New York than in. Uh, she enacted more than more gentleman friends and more young lady friends too. Yeah. So here she, yeah, she's saying, you know, where, where is the society here? I don't see any anybody. She returned. She um, she returned. Uh, um, sorry. um the idea really um just just a second somebody sending me on this um just to just just to answer this just a second Okay, so yeah, I mean, you can see here the idea that Daisy is, is complaining that, you know, people here are, are strange, people are reserved, people are not normal, people are, to her, not natural, or something like that. So she's saying, you know, um, where is the society here? You know? Now, we're not saying that Daisy is not... For Daisy, we're not saying, or the narrator or writer is not saying that Daisy is not natural. Daisy is natural and normal. That's her behavior, that's her attitude, that's her way of life. And that's the American sort of openness, if you like. And, you know, she said here, I've had... I've always had a great deal of gentleman society. You know, she's natural here. She's she's saying this, clearly saying, you know, I I'm I'm okay with having friends from all kinds of friends. And you know, poor poor Winterburn was amused and perplexed. <laughs> Look at the narrator here really giving us the funny why you say poor really he means here the narrator really or or 
um, James, uh, Henry James, really is is mocking Winterburn and saying, <laughs> you know, he he was uh, maybe not happy to know this, and maybe he will be suffering later on because of this, and maybe he is not happy to hear this. Maybe now he's a bit amused, but not really not not completely happy about it so that's why you're saying perplexed and you say oh what's wrong with her and again we say above all he was charmed yeah because the way he, she speaks directly to him he had never yet heard a young american or he had never yet heard a young girl express herself in just this fashion never at least save in cases where to say such things was to have um, at the same time, some rather complicated consciousness about them. And yet he was, sorry, and yet was he to accuse Miss Daisy Miller of an actual or potential um, in conduit? This is, you know, uh, the French word in conduit. In conduit. Mm -hmm. What's this in French? In conduit, you know, means misconduct. Is she here mis, you know, conducting herself? Can he accuse her of being, you know, abnormal or crazy or, uh, you know, um, forward or loose girl or a bad girl? jumping in friends with people why do you say in conduit you know potential potential in conduit this is as i said in french means misconduct misconduct she's not misconducting herself why he felt he had lived in geneva so long as to have got morally muddled so now, you know, we get the idea that, um, and I think this is the key, the key idea in this uh, novel, really. That's why I'm reading this carefully with you. Yeah, maybe he started to get really muddled to, didn't, to, to not to understand why she's behaving like that. But she's normal. For her, this is normal. Normal behavior in American society people are open and free and they talk and they have friends no problem that's not misconduct to her it's natural but to him maybe he said mm, maybe i started to get funny and i started to get confused about what is good and what is not good you know that's what they say here morally muddled you know he's not really sure about what is moral and what is immoral he had lost the right sense for the young American tone, as we say. Never indeed since he had grown old enough to appreciate things had he encountered a young compatriot or of so strong a type as this. Yeah, so uh, for him maybe, yeah, he has never seen or be before experienced or met a real American girl like her or a strong American girl like her, when we know maybe she's not strong, because here you can see the quotation marks, strong, because in his mind she could be strong, but to her, that's for her, that's normal. Certainly, she was very charming, but how extraordinarily communicative and how tremendously easy. Was she simply a pretty girl from New York State? Were they all like that, the pretty girls who had had a good deal of gentleman's society? Or was she also a, you know, designing, notice here, a designing, an audacious, in short, an expert young person? Hmm. Again, the idea here, audacious. And again, designing, I think these are negative words to use against girl, designing. 
you know, means mm, they are wicked and they know what they are doing. Again, audacious means, you know, forward. A lot of, you know, things about being forward. Yes, his instinct for such a question had ceased to serve him. And his reason could be mislead, could, uh, sorry, could but mislead. Miss Daisy Miller looked extremely innocent. So he comes back to say, well, really she is not that type. She really is not that designing. She is really not that audacious. Or she is not really that insolent, maybe or impudent, or maybe forward, be loose, as he describes her. She looks okay. She is innocent. Some people had told him that, after all, American girls were extremely innocent. <laughs> and look here, the idea where, you know, capital, means now they are not. Maybe, yeah, yeah, they were, they were, but now we, we have no idea. So, again, I think the narrator is, is focusing carefully about this yeah and others had told him that after all they were not mm -hmm. he must on the whole take miss daisy miller for a flirt a pretty american flirt what a flirt he must take her he must he must why must a flirt why a flirt she's not a flirt I mean, a flirt, somebody who's jumping with men everywhere and every time and wasting time, maybe losing her maybe name or something. She's not a flirt. She's not a flirt. A pretty American flirt. He had never as yet had relations with representatives of that class. Well, as if to say, well, he had no idea what flirts are. He had never been with a flirt before, but they told him who Europeans or other, or, or other people around him told him or made him think and made him know what, what women should be or how they should be and so on. And I think this is the really the terrible thing. He didn't marry her because of that. And he felt absolutely, you know, regretful and angry that he did not marry her because of that when she was not and this is the the tragedy she was not a flirt he had known here in you he had sorry he had known here in europe two or three women persons older than miss daisy miller and provided for respectability's sake with husbands who were great coquettes dangerous terrible woman with whom one's light uh, commerce might indeed take a serious turn what coquettes and dangerous woman mm. dangerous <laughs> again the question here about light commerce what's that you know so really, he say, as if to say, he had no experience. He had no idea. He maybe met one or two, three, or one or two uh, um, wives or people or women or people who are really, if you like, to him. And here, there, I think, you know, Henry James is, is showing really a bad picture of women to some extent. Yeah, really, to some extent, a bad picture of women to some extent about saying that these women are dangerous cockhead and dangerous mm. this charming apparition what why apparition oh. this charming apparition was not a coquette in that sense she was very pretty, unsophisticated. 
she was only a very pretty American flirt. Winterburn was almost grateful for having found the formula that applied to Miss Daisy Miller. Formula? <laughs> What's this, chemistry? We are here in a chemistry class, formula? What? Meaning that she is uh, unsophisticated and she is a flirt. And not she is saying apparition, means she's, she's, she's calling her already a ghost. What ghost? Yeah, because she will, later on we know that she will die and he will live with her ghost. He will live in her ghost and guilty because he didn't marry her. Yeah, she is, she will be later on the apparition. She will be the ghost which will haunt him because he did not marry her because he felt really, really, uh, you know, upset and um, regretful when it was, of course, too late. So here you can see the, maybe the foreshadowing of the end of the story because she's going to die and she is going to, you know, he's going to be absolutely miserable because of that. And of course, um, as I say here, the decision that he made or he concluded in his mind immediately because that's his knowledge. That's what people told him or how the, he was brought up, that she was a flirt. Winterburn was almost grateful for having found the formula that applied to Miss Daisy Miller. He learned, he leaned back in his seat. He remarked to himself that he had, that she had the finest little nose he had ever seen. He wondered what were the regular conditions and limitations of one's intercourse with a pretty American flirt. It was presently became, sorry, it presently became apparent that he was in the way to learn. You know, I think here the, you know, James is funny and uh, amazing the way he is um, giving us this information or if you like this narrative to say, yeah, he is charmed, but already he is um, in love with her, and but he has already decided that she's a flirt and he doesn't like it, and already feels he's unhappy about it, as if he, he doesn't know how to cope with it and what to do with it and, and so on. And I think this is his mistake. Absolutely, this is his mistake. And later on, we shall see that in, in a lot of details. Anyway, um, again, here you can, you can see um, the discussion the, between them started to develop. Um, Uh, notice here um, the um, the uh, dialogue, of course, uh, when started between them, I am saying, well, when we see here the judgment before even knowing each other, notice again, uh, the next section you can see, Miss Miller looked at him a moment and then with all serenity, I wish you would stay with him, she said. He pretended to consider it. I would much rather go to Chilon with you. With me, she asked without a shadow of emotion. She didn't rise blushing as a young person of Geneva would have done. And yet, conscious that he had gone very far, he thought it would it possible she had drawn back. And with your mother, and sorry, and with your mother, he answered very respectfully. But it seemed that both his audacity and his respect were lost on Miss Daisy Miller. You know, so he immediately, as I said, he felt that there's something 
strange about this girl. So that's why he says, as if to say, uh, his maybe, maybe uh, he lost respect for her, or even his audacity means he became he became himself uh, forward and he wanted to speak to her. I guess mother's uh, mother wouldn't go for you. She smiled. And she ain't much bent on going anyway. She don't like to ride around in the afternoon. And which she familiarly proceeded. But did you really mean what you said just now, that you would like to go up there? Most earnestly, I meant it, Winterburn asked or declared. So here you can see the beginning, as I said, of their um, real friendship starts starting with their you know, so here um, we meet again one of their one one character, of course, who's Eugenio. They are, uh, you know, is um, there if you like a manservant, if you like. Notice here, Eugenio is our courier. You know, he's like as I said, he's our manservant. He uh, doesn't like to stay with Randolph. He is the most fastidious man I ever saw. And, you know, Winterburn, again, you can see more and more uh, commentary by, we know more of the action, as you can see from the story here, through the narrator's commentary, I think, which is, which is really interesting here. Okay. Yeah, so um, the discussion and the dialogue went on and on. In the next section, they went to the place here. Uh, her, his, uh, her mother was happy to see them going, and there was no problem at all. So here you can see more developments of uh, the story. Uh, and you would think, really, that there is a real love relationship struck between them, right? And um, Miss, uh, Miss uh, here you can see the narrator, he had, however, engaged to do more than proved feasible in promising to present his aunt, Mrs. Costello, to Miss Daisy Miller. You know, here, of course, uh, remember, Winterburn, really, in a way, in a way, Winterburn is not completely to blame because he's, he's in, a, in a sense, he's, he's stupid to listen to uh, to people like Mrs. Costello, his aunt. And, you know, he, that's why um, I think the narrator describes him as a weak character. And maybe, maybe, maybe he uh, does not deserve uh, to get this lovely, maybe, uh, young lady like Daisy. Because, as I said, you can see the name, even the name, as I said, the symbolism of the name. Daisy and the winter, you know, which is the opposite. And uh, of course, here we can see that uh, Mrs. Costello would never like to meet her because she thinks she's above, uh, you know, or uh, Daisy and her mother and and their or the family of of Daisy. They think they think you know they are, uh, or she thinks that they are lower. Uh, than her, uh, so that's why she would never uh, be happy to to be with them or to to get associated with them. So please, um, please uh, read this. Try to finish the whole thing. Maybe next time I will I will be quicker. I mean, because maybe it could be next time um, will be if uh, again I will I will. I will tell you if you really, um, if you want the exam to be next week or not, we can decide on the next lecture. We can decide on the next lecture as, uh, as you know. So, yeah, so I will stop here really and I will, um, 